Good evening, everyone, and welcome here to Monument Park in the city of Gardner. Uh, if you're new to Gardner, welcome. My name is Mike Nicholson. I have the honor and privilege of serving as this city's mayor. Uh, and this night is really cool for me. Uh, it's something that we don't get to see here as often while we do have our regular summer concerts in the park series here every Saturday evening. This is just extra special. There are students here sitting behind me representing over 33 different states from across the country. To celebrate the legacy of one of the world's, in my opinion, greatest composers, the March King John Philip Sousa. To remember the fact that his, his band, under his direction, performed here in Gardner several times. And, as the mayor, one of the coolest things that I can think of is approximately six hours ago at one o'clock, the city of Gardner had its 237th birthday today. And while we're not here officially to celebrate this city's founding and our anniversary, the fact that we have a program called the Star Spangled Celebration on a day that we remember Colonel Thomas Gardner, who this city's named after, is just really cool to me. Colonel Thomas Gardner actually never stepped foot in this area that we call Gardner today, but Gardner was the first city or town in Massachusetts founded after the Revolutionary War was won. So if you look at the different places around us, Hubbardston, Westminster, Templeton, Ashburnham, they're all named after places that were in England. And when the legislature got together to name what's now known as Gardner, they wanted to honor someone who was an American Revolutionary War hero, and T Colonel Tom was the first person killed in the Battle of Bunker Hill. So we have a Star Spangled spe Celebration to celebrate someone who really helped make that possible for us here in the United States. So that's really cool. I do want to recognize some of the uh, different officials that we have here with us in the audience. We have our state senator, Ann Gobi, who is a proud alumna of the John Philip Sousa Honor Band. Senator Gobi. Over there in the back by the tree. Clarinet, right in? Clarinet, I thought so. Uh, we have our three band directors for our Gardner Public Schools. We have Doug Lepisto from Gardner High School. Jonathan Schmidt from Gardner Middle School, and Michelle Hefner from the Gardner Elementary School. And we have a couple of our city councilors here as well, City Council President Elizabeth Kaczynskis, City Councilor Ron Cormier, and City Councilor Judy Mack as well with us here this evening, so thank you for joining us. Before we get into the band itself, uh, and some information about what we'll be seeing here tonight, I just want to say how proud we are to be able to celebrate uh, the return to live music after the past couple years that we've had, and to celebrate our students here. Two of Gardner's greatest are actually behind me on stage. I'm very proud of you on behalf of the city. I don't know where you're sitting because there's 90 different people behind. There's one over there, and right here too. So congratulations to both of you on behalf of all of us here. We're both all proud of you from this city. This past year, after 10 years, we reinstated the elementary school band program after it was cut during the recession time. Had 141 students enrolled in its first year from grades three through, uh, two through four. Three, three and four. The third and fourth grade alone, 141 students. That's over a third of that school's population in band now. And to help support that, keep it going, we mentioned some of our city councilors here. We put up a proposal and are giving all of our uh, across the school district here in Gardner, $100,000 to support our music programs, our choral band, and general music programs here in our schools in Gardner as a way to continue that going forward because we recognize the important work of the students like those behind you doing every day. And in order to keep that going forward, I want to welcome you all here. This is the 2022 Sousa Honor Band. There are 90 students and an additional 20 staff members from st several different states across the country. This began in 1981 by Colonel John Bourgeois, director at the time of the President's own United States Marine Corps Marching Band in Washington, D.C., and meets biannually every year in places including Washington, D.C., New Orleans, Boston, and this Wednesday in Worcester, Massachusetts, with a couple other stops along the way like we see here today. Uh, the John Philip Susan Foundation offers a number of different rewards and scholarships to acknowledge bands and their directors, including elementary, middle school, and secondary levels, as well as college and university groups, military bands, and community bands, in addition to the honor bands and competitive performances as well. It's my honor now to introduce to you the director for this evening, Colonel Michael J. Coburn, is the conductor of the Sousa National, Sousa National Honor Band, serving as his 
previously as the conductor for Butler University Wind Ensemble in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the last eight years, and for 27 years prior was affiliated with the President's own Marine Corps Marching Band. As its principal euphonium, assistant director, and director for his last 10 years from 2004 to 2014. He was promoted to colonel by President George W. Bush in 2007 and was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal by General James Amos, Com Commandant of the United States Marine Corps in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming your conductor for this evening, Colonel Michael J. Colburn. It's such a pleasure to be here to share this music with all of you. Um, I want to start by pointing out to you that this band behind me has not been a band for very long. We started rehearsing yesterday afternoon, as a matter of fact, uh, and this is our first public outing. So in many ways, the music that you're hearing is kind of a work in progress. We're going to play this concert for all of you here tonight in Gardner. We're in Athol tomorrow night, and then we culminate with a performance in Mechanics Hall in Worcester on Wednesday. So if you're in the area and you like what you're here tonight, please feel free to join us for those other programs. Um, but as, uh, as uh, short a time as we've been together, I've just been blown away at the talent and dedication of these students. We have accomplished already so much musically that that just excites me greatly. 
uh, and I'm so happy to share this with you here tonight. We begin our program uh, appropriately with music from the March King, from John Philip Sousa himself. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, being director of the Marine Band, um, I've got a special uh, place in my heart for John Philip Sousa, who was also the director of the Marine Band from 1880 to 1892. The march that you just heard is entitled Who's Who in Navy Blue, and it's a march that recently celebrated its 100th birthday back in 2020. It was written in 1920 uh, in honor of the graduating class of the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, hence the, the title, Who's Who in Navy Blue. And the Academy was so impressed and pleased with the march that Sousa wrote that they made him an honorary member of the graduating class of 1921. We're going to continue with the march of another composer who is so important to concert bands, and that is Percy Aldridge Granger. Uh, Granger was an Australian-American, uh, wrote so many really uh, incredibly important works for the concert band. Um, and Granger, one of the really distinguishing qualities uh, about Granger was his affinity for folk song. He loved folk song, especially British folk song, but he actually uh, arranged and collected folk songs from really uh, a number of different countries. Um, he collected these uh, primarily uh, in England, but the folk song that you're about to hear was not actually collected by Granger, but it was a folk song collector much, much before Granger, back in the mid-19th century. The tune is called Irish Tune from County Derry. Now, once you hear this melody, you're going to say, hey, wait a second, that's Danny Boy. Well, it didn't become Danny Boy until later in the 20th century. It actually existed for many, many decades before those lyrics from Danny Boy were assigned to this melody. Uh, Granger loved this particular tune. He arranged it for a number of different ensembles, concert band, choir, orchestra, chamber music. And, and in all sorts of different uh, uh, styles. But this was one of his earliest and still one of his most beloved settings of Irish tune from County Derry. I also wanted to mention that we are dedicating the performance of this particular work to uh, a, another giant in the band world, and that is Mr. James Keane, who uh, unfortunately uh, recently passed away. Uh, Jim Keane was the longtime director of bands at the University of Illinois and was really a giant in our profession not only because of the many wonderful conducting performances that he offered, but he was also a teacher and mentor to so many. So he will be greatly missed, and we would like to dedicate this performance in memory of James Key.
going to uh, continue now with one of the newer works on our program this evening, a work by the American composer Brian George, uh, a composition that he wrote in 2008 entitled Firefly. Uh, the inspiration for this work uh, came when Brian George was sitting out one evening with his young children, and his daughter, who was then uh, four years old, was chasing fireflies around the yard. And so he, he asked her, so, sweetie, what do, you, what do you think of these fireflies? And she said, oh, that's not a firefly. That's Tinkerbell, and she's going to take me off on an adventure. And he was so impressed with this kind of uh, imagination and, and this kind of fantasy world of his daughter that it inspired him to write a work of an, an imaginary adventure. If his daughter really was whisked away by Tinkerbell and taken all over the place for uh, exciting and at times really dramatic adventures. So we hope that you can imagine, we don't have any fireflies here with us tonight, but I hope you can imagine some and enjoy this journey through a child's imagination, Ryan George's Firefly.
Did I mention we just started rehearsing yesterday, right? I mean, pretty incredible to put something like that together. So guys, great job. So we're going to continue now with a, a piece by another contemporary American composer uh, by the name of Julie Giroux. Uh, Julie has kind of an unusual resume as a composer in that uh, as soon as she graduated from college, she headed out to the West Coast. And within hours, literally hours, she already uh, had a job working in the television and film industry. Uh, she had tremendous success scoring for both film and TV out there. But increasingly, in recent years, she's become more attracted to composing for the concert band. And we are so very fortunate that this is the case. She has written proli prolifically for concert band on various levels. Uh, if you're a fan at all of uh, educational bands uh, from junior high right up through high school, you likely have heard Julie's work because it is uh, so, uh, so popular and so well received uh, because she is such a fine composer. The work that you're about to hear um, is entitled Hymn for the Innocent. Uh, Julie is uh, a very sensitive person, really quite empathic. And um, rather than writing this work in tribute to one particular segment of the population that, that she felt was uh, uh, potentially victimized, that uh, one segment that was really innocent, she decided to dedicate this, this work to all of the innocents in the world. And when you hear the, the incredible um, beauty and, and sadness at times, but also joy in this music, it's not hard to imagine uh, how this music really came from her heart. This is Julie Giroux's Hymn for the Innocent.
The next uh, composer on our program is the British composer Malcolm Arnold. Uh, Malcolm Arnold began his professional career actually as a trumpet player, uh, played in uh, the London Philharmonic Orchestra as a very, very young man, but soon turned his attention to composing and decided that's really how he wanted to make his mark on the world as a musician. And he never looked back. He has written prolifically, especially for orchestra, written uh, several symphonies and works of symphonic stature. But in the mid-20th century, his publisher came to him with the idea of composing music that was inspired by folk music from the British Isles. So earlier we heard the music of Percy Aldridge Granger, who often featured folk music, actual folk tunes from those British Isles. But Malcolm Arnold wanted to do something a little different. So he wanted to take the styles of these various kinds of folk music and dance pieces and use them as an inspiration for his own original compositions. So the, uh, the tune that you're going to hear in the second movement we play is actually a folk tune, but the other melodies are all original to Malcolm Arnold. Um, the first set of dances he did was called English Dances, and it was such a success, I hope he sent a thank you note to his publisher, uh, that he went on to write all sorts of dance suites for various uh, portions of the United Kingdom. He wrote English, Cornish, Welsh, um, uh, Irish, uh, folk dance suites, but this is the one that you're about to hear is one of his most popular, his four Scottish dances. So now we're going to play three of these dances. Uh, the first movement, which is a Scotch Strathspey, which is kind of a, uh, a, a slower and, and really kind of majestic and almost militaristic sounding dance. Um, the second movement that we're going to play is actually the third movement in the suite, and it's really a lovely, lovely air. And then the last movement is uh, in Malcolm Arnold's World, uh, Malcolm Arnold's words, A Wild Ride. So we hope you enjoy these three movements from Malcolm Arnold's Four Scottish Dances.
we've got a, a few more selections to share with you. And uh, they're both patriotic, which kind of feels right for a New England concert in the park. Uh, I'm a New Englander myself. I helped in St. Albans, Vermont. And uh, uh, as a young man, started playing in our, uh, our local citizens band and have such fond memories of all those concerts in the park, always which ended on a, on a patriotic note. Uh, the first of the two selections we're going to play for you is the uh, classic Samuel Ward, uh, America the Beautiful, and I think just the most stunning setting out there, the one by Carmen Dragon. Uh, we hope that you enjoy America the Beautiful. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, on behalf of the Sousa Foundation, it's been my pleasure to serve as the band manager uh, for this festival. My name is Craig Robbins, and I presently teach in Harvard, Massachusetts. 
Uh, we're so very happy to be here in Gardner, as uh, everyone has been sharing with you so far this evening, uh, to share this great music with you. One of the purposes of our visit to you is to acknowledge the performances by the original Sousa Band, conducted by Mr. John Philip Sousa himself. These performances took place just down the way here um, in two different places over the course of uh, three different visits that the Sousa Band made. Um, two at the Gardner Opera House, one on March 10 in 1898, again at the Opera House on May 9 in 1899, and at the Gardner Theater on November 16, 1912. My colleague, Dr. Tom Reynolds, has a beautiful plaque um, that the Sousa Foundation uh, has been working to share over the past years uh, with their historical marker project. Uh, so on behalf of the students and staff of the 2022 John Philip Sousa National High School Honor Band, as well as the entire John Philip Sousa Foundation, of which Colonel Colburn is uh, presently Vice President of, we would like to present this historical marker to Mayor Michael Nicholson for the residents of the City of Gardner to commemorate the visit by the March King to your community. Congratulations and thank you so much. Joining us for this uh, for this photo as well, our wonderful music teaching staff from Gardner as well. Can we give them a round of a, a round of applause, please? a presentation like that, I think there's only one composer, one composer, and one piece that we could play. And you could probably guess what it is. Stars and Stripes Forever, absolutely. His, uh, John Philip Sousa's most famous march, composed in 1896. Uh, Sousa was actually in Europe when he got word uh, that his good friend and manager, David Blakely, had died suddenly, unexpectedly. And so Sousa immediately aboard, uh, boarded a steamship back to America. And during that long journey, he was really taken with homesickness for, uh, for America and for uh, Washington, D.C. In fact, he envisioned the White House with a flag flying over it, much like this flag is flying over this lovely band shell here tonight. Um, and, uh, and that memory, of course, came from his days as director of the Marine Band. The resulting march was, uh, as I said, uh, his most famous march, our national march, the Stars and Stripes Forever. 